years ago, Mexico was shaken to its core when 43 college students vanished without a trace in the state of Guerrero, and it was all captured in one chilling video. These young men, studying to become teachers, were last seen being forced into cars against their will. What followed was a nightmare of corruption, violence, and heartbreak that exposed the dark side of Mexico's drug war. But now, a decade later, there's been a shocking breakthrough. Gildardo Lopez Astudillo, known as El Gil, a suspected drug cartel boss allegedly linked to this horrific crime, has been recaptured. Once freed due to a controversial court decision, El Gil is now back behind bars, and his arrest could be the key to unlocking the truth about what really happened on that fateful night in 2014. As we approach the anniversary of this tragedy, let's dive into this story and uncover the twisted web of corruption that has kept the truth hidden for so long. Let's go back to the night of September 26, 2014. The air in Iguala, a small city nestled in the mountains of Guerrero, Mexico, is thick with tension. As darkness falls, a group of students from the Ayotzinapa Rural Teachers College are making their way through the city. These aren't just any students, they're known for their left-wing activism and their habit of borrowing buses for transportation to protests. Tonight, they're on a mission. They need buses to get to Mexico City for the anniversary of the 1968 Tlatelolco massacre, where hundreds of students were tragically killed by government forces. The irony of what's about to happen is almost too much to bear. The students are loud, boisterous even. They're young, full of idealism, and the belief that they can change the world. They have no idea that in a few short hours, their lives will change forever. As they commandeer several buses, there's a sense of excitement in the air, but there's also an undercurrent of nervousness. They know what they're doing isn't exactly legal, but it is common practice. They've done this before without much trouble, but tonight is different. As the buses start to leave the city, the students notice police patrols following them. At first, it doesn't seem too unusual. The authorities often keep an eye on them, but then, without warning, the situation explodes into violence. Ernesto Guerrero, one of the students who survived that night, later recounted the events of that night. Imagine the scene. The quiet night is suddenly shattered by gunfire. The students, armed with nothing but rocks and their own voices, desperately trying to understand why law enforcement, the very people meant to protect them, are attacking them. The only footage ever released of the shooting is blurry and not much can be seen, but in it, you can hear the desperate pleads of students trying to make it out alive. The air fills with the acrid smell of gunpowder, the sharp cracks of gunfire echoing off the buildings, screams of fear and pain mix with the sound of shattering glass as bullets tear through the bus windows. In the chaos, some students manage to escape, running into the darkness, hearts pounding, not knowing if the next moment might be their last. But for 43 of those students, there would be no escape. You can clearly hear the desperation in their voices, as well as the utter disbelief that this is really happening. These are students, not criminals. They're armed with textbooks and dreams, not guns and drugs. Yet here they are, being treated like dangerous enemies of the state. As the dust settles, the full horror of the situation becomes clear. 43 students have vanished, forced into police vehicles, and driven away into the night. The streets of Iguala, so recently filled with the sounds of youthful protest, are now eerily quiet. All that remains are shell casings, scattered rocks, and the lingering echo of gunfire. In the days that follow, confusion and fear grip the city. Families of the missing students desperately seek answers. Where are their sons? What happened to them? But the official responses are vague, contradictory, and ultimately unsatisfying. Resultados 
usted ve ya el enojo de cada uno de los padres en la desesperación, no creo que a partir de ese día usted también pueda dormir tranquilo. But the truth proves elusive. As weeks turn into months, and months into years, the disappearance of the 43 students becomes more than just a tragic event. It becomes a symbol of the deep-rooted corruption and violence plaguing Mexico. Rumors and theories swirl. Some say the students were handed over to a drug cartel. Others whisper about military involvement. The government pushes a story about the students being killed and burned in a garbage dump, but experts quickly poke holes in this theory. One thing becomes clear, this is not a simple case of crime and punishment. This is a complex web of corruption, involving not just drug cartels, but also local police, politicians, and possibly even the military. Lo que queda claro es que había una gran comunicación, presunta complicidad entre Guerreros Unidos y el Procurador de Guerrero. The implications are staggering. If the investigators are right, this means that the very institutions meant to protect the people, law enforcement, the local government, and even the justice system, were complicit in the disappearance of 43 young men. No hay ninguna intervención, hay una total inacción. As the case unfolds, it exposes the dark side of Mexico's drug war. It's not just cartels versus the government. It's a complex, twisted system where the lines between good guys and bad guys are blurred beyond recognition. And at the center of it all are 43 empty chairs in classrooms, 43 families torn apart, and 43 young lives cut tragically short. Their disappearance becomes a wound that refuses to heal, a constant reminder of the cost of corruption and the fragility of justice in a world where power often trumps truth. Now, a decade later, with the arrest of Gildardo López Astudillo, known as El Gil, there's finally a glimmer of hope. Could this be the key that finally unlocks the truth about that terrible night in Iguala? As we delve deeper into this case, remember, behind all the politics, all the corruption, and all the theories, there are 43 human stories, 43 young men who went out one night and never came home, and countless lives, forever changed by a night of terror, that exposed the harsh reality of life in a country caught between the rule of law and the rule of the cartels. Now, let's talk about this guy, Gildardo López Astudillo, better known as El Gil. He's a big shot in the Guerreros Unidos cartel and he's been linked to the disappearance of the 43 students. The authorities say he was one of the guys calling the shots that night. El Gil was actually arrested back in 2015, about a year after the students disappeared. But here's where things get crazy. In 2019, he was released from prison. Why? Because a judge said the evidence against him was obtained illegally. In other words, investigators working on the case messed up when they were gathering evidence, and El Gil walked free because of it. You can imagine how that went down with the families of the missing students. They were furious, and rightfully so. Here was a guy who might have answers about what happened to their kids, and he was just allowed to walk out of prison like it was no big deal. But wait, the story doesn't end there. On September 9th, 2024, El Gil was arrested again, just miles away from where the students were ambushed. After five years of freedom, he's now back behind bars. The authorities nabbed him on charges of organized crime, which is basically a fancy way of saying he's accused of being involved with the cartel. Now, this arrest is a big deal. El Gil might have information about what really happened to those 43 students. He might be the key to finally solving this mystery that's been haunting Mexico for a decade. But let's back up a bit and talk about why this case is so important. See, the disappearance of these 43 students isn't just a tragedy for their families, it's a tragedy for all of Mexico. It exposed the deep, ugly ties between drug cartels, local governments, and law enforcement. Think about it. In this case, you had local police working with a drug cartel to kidnap and likely kill a group of students. And it wasn't just a few bad apples. This was systematic. This was organized. This was the kind of thing that could only happen if corruption had infected every level of government and law enforcement. In other words, this wasn't just about or money. This was about power. These students, with their protests and their political activism, were seen as a threat by some very powerful, very dangerous people. And it's not just Guerrero. This kind of corruption is a problem all over Mexico. According to the U.S. State Department, more than half of Mexico's states are under the influence of organized crime. 
Imagine living in a place where you can't trust the police, where you don't know if your local government is working for you or for the cartels. That's a really scary thought. Here's another shocking statistic for you. Almost 94% of crimes in Mexico aren't even investigated. That means, if you're a victim of a crime in Mexico, there's a good chance nothing will be done about it. The bad guys just get away with it. And the disappearances? The 43 students aren't the only ones. Since late 2006, the official number of disappeared persons in Mexico is over 22,000. And some experts think the real number could be much higher. <laughs> So when people in Mexico heard about El Gil's arrest, it gave them hope. Hope that maybe, just maybe, they might finally get some answers. Hope that maybe, just maybe, the truth about what happened to those 43 students might finally come out. But here's the thing, even if El Gil talks, even if he spills everything he knows, it might not be enough. Because this case isn't just about one night in Iguala, it's about a whole system of corruption and violence that's been built up over years and years. Remember how the government tried to push this story about the students being burned in a garbage dump? Well, independent experts looked into that claim and what they found was shocking. That scenario was impossible. The fire needed to burn 43 bodies would have been so big, so hot, that it would have scorched the surrounding area and there was no evidence of that kind of fire. So if the students weren't burned in the dump, what happened to them? That's the question that's been hanging over Mexico for a decade now and it's a question that El Gil might be able to answer. But here's another twist in this never-ending tragedy. It's not just cartel members and corrupt officials who have been implicated in this case. In 2022, the Mexican government's own Truth Commission said that the military shared responsibility for what happened. They said it was a state crime. Think about that for a second. A state crime. That means the government itself, the people who are supposed to protect citizens, were involved in the disappearance of these students. And it gets worse. In 2022, the same year the Truth Commission released its findings, the Mexican government arrested the former Attorney General, Jesus Murillo Caram. This was the guy who oversaw the original investigation into the student's disappearance, the guy who pushed the garbage dump story. And now he's accused of being part of the cover-up. It's like peeling an onion. Every layer you peel back just reveals more corruption, more lies, more people involved in this horrible crime. But let's get back to El Gil and his arrest. Why is it such a big deal? Well, for one thing, he's not just some low-level cartel member. He's allegedly one of the big shots in Guerrero's Unidos. So if anyone knows what really happened that night, it's probably him. And here's another thing to consider. El Gil has been free for five years. Five years where he could have been doing anything, talking to anyone. Did he stay in touch with other cartel members? Did he talk to corrupt officials? Does he know things now that he didn't know when he was first arrested back in 2015? These are all questions that investigators are probably dying to ask him. But of course, there's no guarantee he'll talk. Cartel members aren't exactly known for being chatty with the police. But even if El Gil doesn't say a word, his arrest is still significant. It shows that the Mexican government isn't giving up on this case. It shows that even after a decade, they're still trying to find out what happened to those 43 students. And that's important, not just for the families of the missing students, but for all of Mexico. Because this case has become a symbol of everything that's wrong with the system in Mexico. The corruption, the violence, the impunity. It's all wrapped up in the story of these 43 missing students. Every year on the anniversary of their disappearance, people take to the streets in Mexico. They march, they protest, they demand answers. And every year, the families of the missing students have to face the fact that another year has gone by without knowing what happened to their loved ones. You can hear the determination in those words. These families aren't giving up. They're not going to stop until they know the truth. And that's why El Gil's arrest is so important. It's a reminder that this case isn't closed just yet. It's a reminder that there are still people out there who might have answers. And it's a reminder to the corrupt officials and cartel members who were involved that they're not safe. That sooner or later, the truth will come out. But here's the thing. Even if we do find out what happened to those 43 students, even if every single person involved is brought to justice, it won't be enough. Because this case is just the tip of the iceberg. It's just one example of the kind of violence and corruption that happens in Mexico every single day. So while El Gil's arrest is a step in the right direction, 
It's just that, a step. There's still a long, long way to go before Mexico can truly deal with its cartel problem. But maybe, just maybe, this case can be a turning point. Maybe it can be the thing that finally makes people say, enough is enough. Maybe it can be the catalyst for real change in Mexico. Because the story of these 43 students isn't just a Mexican story, it's a human story. It's a story about injustice, about the abuse of power, about the struggle between good and evil. And those are things that everyone, no matter where they're from, can understand and relate to. So as we wait to see what happens with El Gil, as we hope that maybe this time we'll get some answers, let's not forget the bigger picture. Let's not forget that this case is about more than just 43 missing students. It's about a whole system that needs to change. And let's not forget the human cost of this tragedy. 43 young men, with their whole lives ahead of them, were taken away in the blink of an eye. 43 families have spent a decade not knowing what happened to their loved ones. Countless lives have been changed forever because of what happened that night in Iguala. So as we follow the developments in El Gil's case, as we hope for answers and justice, let's also think about the bigger picture. Let's think about what kind of world we want to live in. A world where students can protest without fear of being kidnapped or killed. As we wrap up this deep dive into the Ayotzinapa case and El Gil's recent arrest, it's clear that this story is far from over. The recapture of Gildardo Lopez Astudillo might be a breakthrough, but it's just one piece of a much larger puzzle. The fight for justice for the 43 missing students continues, as does the broader struggle against corruption and cartel violence in Mexico. As we move forward, let's keep the memory of these students alive, and let's keep demanding answers. Hey, thanks for watching. Gildardo Lopez Astudillo isn't the only kingpin to get arrested in recent months, and probably won't be the last before this year ends. So I'm going to leave you with a question to ponder. Are we really starting to see a light at the end of this tunnel? Make sure to share your thoughts on this down in the comments section below. Also, if you've enjoyed this video, then make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you'll never miss out on other similar stories. Until next time, stay safe.